In this video, I'm gonna show you how to tape and mud drywall. We'll be going over how to install the corner bead, how to tape the joints, and how to finish and sand. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. Your channel's all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot of information to go over, so let's get started. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know that finishing drywall is something that takes skill and time to get really good and fast at. So if you're doing this as a first timer, you're not going to be fantastic right out of the gates. It's going to take several years to develop a really fast technique if you're gonna be doing this as a professional job. Most time I hire out the drywall for my jobs, but I do tackle small tasks when it comes to drywall, like finishing a garage is something I could handle. Oftentimes I'll hire out a whole house if I have a house project I'm doing. First thing that I like to do after the drywall is hung is go through and install what's called corner bead. Corner bead is going to give a protective outer edge to the walls on the outside corners. So that way they're reinforced and they'll give you a place to finish up to. So there's different types of corner bead. There's metal corner bead, vinyl corner bead, there's paper face corner bead. So there's a lot of options for corner bead, but my favorite and the most common is going to be metal. You'll notice in the background that some of the drywall's already been taped and the screw holes hit. That's because my helper, which is my father, used to be a full-time drywall finisher. So he's the one who taught me a lot of the techniques I'm gonna show you, so keep that in mind. And we're gonna start by installing the corner bead on this corner. I'm gonna measure from the ceiling to the floor at the corner to get the exact measurement. I need my corner bead. So I'm just gonna take my tape butt up tight against the ceiling and get that measurement. My measurement is 114 inches from the ceiling down to the floor. So I'm gonna subtract a half inch. I'm gonna cut it 113 and a half inches for this corner. I'm gonna mark 113 and a half inches for the length we need. And then I got my, what are called 10 snips here. And that's what I'm gonna to use to cut the metal. In order to cut the metal, very simple. We simply just cut at that length. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just cut down one side. Then I'm gonna flip it around, cut down the other side. And then we can just bend that little bit off. And that's all there is to cutting it to length. To secure the corner bead, I'll be using inch and a quarter drywall screws along with a impact driver or drill with a number two Phillips bit in order to drive the screws. I'm on my step ladder and I'm at the top of the corner where the corner meets the ceiling. And I'm first gonna take the corner and just place it right up against the ceiling. And then we don't wanna force the corner onto the wall. We wanna actually let this corner bead just kind of float comfortably and you don't want to press it because it'll flatten it out and you won't be able to finish up against the corner. So you want to put it on nice and gentle and just kind of eyeball right where the corner is setting to where we can finish it properly. So right there looks pretty good. So I'm going to place a screw here into one of the screw holes that are placed here. And you can also use staples or other fasteners. There's also a tool that will place the corner on and kind of crimp it into the edge. But I actually just like to use the drywall screws because we got them on hand. And if you're doing this as a DIY project, you really don't need to invest more tools than what you need. So right here, we're gonna place a screw. And we're gonna sink the screw to where it's below the surface of the corner bead. So that way we can finish it. And as you can see, the corner's just kind of floating here right now. So we're simply going to come down about midway and place another screw before we put any more screws here. I'm now here midway and I'm going to do the same that I did up above. Just place it gently into the corner to where it looks nice and even and where we want to be able to finish up to it comfortably and that looks good there. So now I'm gonna place another screw here midway. I'm now here at the bottom and this will be the third screw and again we're going to eyeball it to where it's about center of the corner and it looks good right about there and now I'm going to place the screw here at the bottom. I'm now going to place screws every 8 to 12 inches up this side of the corner. Now that I have this side of the corner bead secured, I'm gonna take a six inch knife 
and I'm going to place it right against the edge of the corner, then the other edge on the wall. And then I'm going to slot it to make sure we have a space in which drywall mud will be able to finish this corner properly. So we're going to go right down the whole thing. And then we're going to check the other side as well before we place screws in it, just to make sure we don't have to manipulate it some in order to get it to sit properly to finish properly. So you can see up close, if we place our knife right against the wall, see that gap? That's what we want as we run our knife down the corner bead in order to make sure it's on properly to be able to finish. And if we take a look on this side that has no screws yet, it should be the same thing. As you can see, there's a gap there to nothing. That's going to give us a place for mud to set in order to finish it and give it a good look. I'm now going to screw off this side of the corner bead to complete the installation of the corner bead. I'm now going to install the remainder of the corner bead in this garage before I install the taping. I'm now going to go over the tools and material that I'm going to use to do the rest of the drywall finishing. I'm going to go over the material first. The first thing I'd like to go over is this flex corner. Because I have the upstairs that has some odd angles, those corners are very difficult to finish using paper tape. So these flex corners are awesome for anything that's a weird angle and it's going to be used in a long run in this case because I got a 64 foot corner and there's four of them. So this flex corner is going to do awesome for finishing that and I'll show you that in a bit. The next thing I would like to go over is the green lid drywall mud. This green lid drywall mud is a heavy mud that dries really hard. So this is going to be what we're going to use for our taping and hitting the screws. Because we want to use the green lid mud, it sets up really hard and it's harder the sand. So that's why you don't use that for your last two coats, your second and third coat. You want to use the red lid for that. This is more of a mid-weight. And with this mid-weight, it's going to be a little easier to sand than the green lid. And it ain't going to be super soft like the blue lid drywall mud. I've used that for in the past on some things and when it dries, it's still kind of soft to me. So I like to use the red lid. It's a good medium weight. And as far as the tools go, I'm going to be using this paper tape holder and paper tape for taping the joints. And then I'm going to be using this drywall mud pan and you can get this in a set. It comes with a four and a six, eight and a 12 inch knife and the mud pan. If you would like to check this out, I'll put a link in the description below so you can see the exact set that I got. But these are the tools that we're going to be using in this video. I'm going to hit all the screw holes first. So I'm going to be using the green lid mud, the heavyweight mud for this. And this is going to be something you're going to want to use your four inch knife on. And you don't need a ton of mud here, unlike taping, because it'll dry out before you use all of it. And you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. So I'm just going to get just a little bit to get started and then start hitting the screws. And you always want to make sure you put your lid back on to keep your mud nice and moist. While I'm filling in the screw holes, always carry a impact driver with a number two bit on it, same one that we used to install the corner bead, because when you're placing mud over the screws, every once in a while you run into a screw that needs sunk in a little deeper. So I always have this by my side when I'm filling in screws. So I want to show you how to properly fill in these screws. In order to cover up this screw, all we gotta do is simply just take a little bit of mud on our knife and we simply just smear it over across the top then clean it off like so. And something really important that a lot of people get wrong here is they'll cover it totally up with mud and then they wipe off way too much like this. You don't wanna wipe it off that much. You wanna make sure that you just wipe right across it easily because once this dries, it's actually going to shrink a little bit in the middle. So if you place it on like this, once it dries, you're going to have a divot right here. And in fact, this is a screw that may need sunk in a little bit. So that's why I carry this with me. So we just need to put a little bit of pressure on it 
just enough to turn it about half a turn. And now we're gonna fill it back in. And again, this is a quick process. We don't spend a lot of time on this. So when it comes to doing a whole wall, I'm gonna show you the best method I've found that works for me. I got several screws here that need hit. So instead of individually hitting one then cleaning it, what I like to do, I'll go ahead and get some mud on my knife and I'll actually go ahead and hit several like so. And then after I hit a few, if not up to five or six, I'll go ahead and wipe it right off like so. So something like that. And as you can see, it's a much quicker process that way. But something I'd like to point out, again, this is why I carry your screwdriver or your impact driver. You got little screws here that are setting up a little bit too high. So if you have that, we're just gonna sink them in a little bit, like I said. And the reason why that happens, you get in a hurry when you're screwing off the wall when you're installing the drywall and you just don't happen to sink them in far enough. So just something to keep in mind. So again, a little bit of mud. Then we're going to clean it right off like so. And now we just do that to every screw that's in this building. Another thing you can do is quickly just run your knife across the screws to inspect to see if they are protruding too much before you get started applying the mud so you can tighten the screws into the wall before you place mud on the wall. While you're mudding the screws, you don't have to worry about the ones here in the joints or around the windows, because the one around the windows will get covered up by trim, and these joints need taped yet, so when you tape them, you will go ahead and cover up the screws as you go, so just hit the fields. A common method to speed up this process would be to hit the screw holes as you were taping. So I'm going to be showing you how to tape here soon, so keep that in mind. I'm now going to prepare the drywall mud for taping. And I got my drywall mud pen with a 6 inch knife this time. Some people use a four inch knife for taping, but six inch is what's probably the best. And now I'm going to use the green lid drywall mud. And I got my half inch drill here with a mixing blade on it. And I also got a bucket of water. I always like to keep a bucket of water around because we use this to clean up our tools at the end of the day. And then we just keep it until the drywall job's done or until it's really soiled and has switched the water out. But I got my drywall mud here. I'm just gonna mix this up thoroughly. Now you wanna mix up this mud until you got a peanut butter-like consistency. And if you notice it's too thick, you can add a little bit of water to it and mix it until it gets to the consistency you want. But this actually isn't bad here, so we're gonna use it. And now I'm just going to place this mixer in the water and clean it off. I'm now going to load my pan up with the mixed mud to begin taping. I'm going to begin by taping the tapered joints first. When I say a tapered joint, this is the two factory edges of the drywall that have been finished with paper. And there's a little taper on each edge here. So it gives you a place to embed the tape. So it gives it a nice flat finish when it's done. So now the first thing we need to do is cut our tape to length for our joint. And as you can see, our joint is from this window over to this window. And first thing I need to do is take my knife. I'm gonna clean it off first. And then I'm going to Take my tape, which I keep it by my side using a tape holder. And now I'm gonna place this back here. So I'm just gonna pull up some tape and simply just lay it right where it's gonna be installed at, like so. And it's gonna give us a good length here. That looks pretty good. In order to cut it, just gonna take my drywall knife and then we're going to pull it and rip it. So now we got our Tape that's going to be the same length of the joint we are taping. I'm now going to apply the mud over the joint. I'm going to be using a six inch knife like I mentioned earlier. So your first instinct if you never taped before or done any drywall work is to get mud on your knife and place it over the joint like that. 
but that's not the fastest way of doing it. What I found that works best for me is take it and get it right on the edge of the knife like so, and then start a little bit on the upper side of the joint, come through and kind of rotate your knife and smear it at the same time like that. And don't be afraid to get liberal with the mud because you need plenty of mud to do this properly. And then again, I'm gonna load up my knife on just one half of it, start here, just kind of roll it out nice and easy. And it takes a little practice to get good at it. Now we're just gonna smooth that mud out just to get a good flat start. I'm now gonna grab the piece of tape that we cut the length and we're gonna start by placing it right in the middle of that joint. And if you're having problems locating the joint, you can push in on your drywall and you'll see it flex and it's gonna indicate the exact joint. So some areas, if you have it between two subs that are close, you won't be able to do that. But if you go to the 16 on center, you'll be able to see that very easy. So we're gonna place the tape there first. And in order to place it, we start by just putting it lightly right here on the edge, go about arm's length, and then we're just going to touch it right into the center of the joint. Just gently press it into place and make sure we stay right in the center of the joint. Now with the tape placed on the joint, we're going to start in the middle of the tape and we're going to gently press it onto the wall and keep your knife at a 45 degree angle here. We don't want to place it straight up and down or straight vertically. We want to keep a slight angle. And now just gently start by pressing it into that mud. The next swipe, press a little harder. And then on the other swipes, keep pressing a little bit harder. And the idea here is to flatten out the tape, get all the excess mud out from behind it and clean it up as you go. So again, press and pull. And then clean up down here on the edges. So this side is complete. Now we do from here over on the other half. Again, nice gentle push. Next swipe a little harder. The next swipe a little harder. And now that joint is taped. Now as you can see, it's really not that complicated. So now I'm gonna show you where the two pieces of drywall butt together how to do that. Here is where two pieces butt together and they are not tapered. So this joint is one of the vertical joints. And the first thing we need to do is just like we did with the taper joint, is get our tape length first. And I'm now gonna place mud down the joint using a six inch knife, just like we did on the tapered sides. Now I'm gonna take my tape and just simply place it right over that joint. And then just press it into the mud. Now because we have gravity working against us in this case, I'm simply gonna hold at the very top where you can hold the bottom either or and go up or down. So I'm just gonna hold it top a little bit of pressure and then start pressing it into the mud. And now once we got it tacked on pretty well, I don't have to hold it anymore and then just start working that mud out from behind it. So now that we got most of the mud placed back in behind it and smoothed out, just make sure you hit this edge, go down each side because since there's no tapered, that center is gonna be humped up just a little more than the rest of the drywall, but that's something that all the butt joints are gonna have.
It is best to not cut the tape and make short runs and continue the taping. As you can see here, we did not rip the tape and make multiple joints. We just kept the tape going as I moved the scaffold around for him. He placed the mud into the tapered joints and made the long runs very easy with the scaffolding. And also, this is a good system if you have a two-man team. And if you don't, you would just have to get up and down the scaffold more often. As I mentioned before, it's more efficient to hit the screw holes while you're taping as you see him doing here. And if you didn't already notice, all of the non-taper joints or the butt joints have already been done and they are totally dry before we did the tapered joints. That's something else we like to do. So you might want to add that to your technique. I'm now going to show you how to tape a corner and the cool thing about corners once you get the length of the tape it's going to be the same length for the rest of the corners in the building so same with the outside corners when it comes to corner bead but I'm going to go ahead and just place this up and get my measurement of the tape first and just walk it down the wall till we get to the floor all right and that's the length we got to cut it so something else you can also do is simply take your tape measure and measure it and then place that length on the floor and cut it. So I just wanted to explain that you can do it this way as well. We now got to fold this tape in half. And the cool thing about the tape, it comes with a center groove. So it folds easier in the center. So all we got to do is start at one side here. Go ahead and just push it together on each end. And it's going to fold right in half. And you simply just got to gently squeeze the tape together like so, and then fold it all down that length of tape. Now the tape's prepared to be placed in the corner. I'm now gonna place mud down each side of the corner, and we're gonna use the same principle. We're just gonna get it on one section of the knife. One over half that works for your handing is gonna be accurate. And we're gonna go down and start placing mud right in that corner. After we do one side, I'm now going to go down the other. And I'm now going to get the mud down the whole corner to the floor first. All right, I'm now back up here to the top of the corner. And I'm going to start by placing my tape right into the corner gently. I'm first going to stick the top here. Just give it a little press, then come down about two foot or so. Same thing, just start laying it right into that corner. I'm trying to keep it nice and straight. I'm gonna give it a little swipe down just to start it into that corner. And we're gonna place it in the mud, clear down to the floor. Now we simply just start by softly pressing this edge into the corner and taking some of the mud out as we go. We're gonna go down one side first. So again, a nice 45 degree angle and try to keep this end of the knife kind of acting as a guide to keep it nice and square at a 45 degree angle while pressing into that corner. Now after this side set, and that looks really good, now we do the other side. And you want to be careful not to put too much pressure into that corner because you can cut the tape. You don't want to do that. Now we just keep that same momentum going down to the floor. But as you can see here from here up, that looks good. So that's how you place the tape in the corner. That corner is now complete, and now it's time to move on to the next one. I'm now going to show you how I'm going to tape the corner where the ceiling meets the wall. So instead of trying to get up on a ladder and get a length for your tape, 
I'm just going to take the tape from my side and actually just measure it from the wall's perspective instead of up at the corner. So we're going to come over here, place it tight to where it's going to end up above. Then simply walk the tape out and get it to length. And something you got to remember too with the tape, it's okay if it's a little longer, you just want to try to make sure it ain't too short. <laughs> And I'm now going to crease that whole corner just like we did the other corner. I'm going to apply the mud to this corner just like we did on the inside corner that I just showed you how to tape. And something I'd like to point out, if you can see here, there's a slight gap up here and it's tight back in there. It's okay to take mud and place it back in here first. So that way you know you got plenty of mud filling in that gap before you place mud across the run. It's just something that adds a little extra security to your corner. And now I'm gonna apply the mud to the ceiling and wall at the same time. Now that I got mud across the whole corner, I'm now gonna place this into the corner and work it in and smooth it out as I go, just like we did the inside corner of the wall. We're simply going to work about six feet or so at a time. So we're just gonna bring it all as we go. Sometimes whenever you're cutting out your receptacles, or in this case, it's a 50 amp receptacle, it got a little out of hand here when we were cutting out around this box. So when we were hanging, we now got to replace this, or actually we got to just fix it. So if you put this cover over this, as you can see, the top and the side here both need repaired. I think this bottom will be fine, but we are going to fix this and it's very simple to do and I'm going to show you how to do it. We want to be able to remove this mud ring and receptacle, so we don't want to cover that up and damage the drywall if we ever had to. So we want to place the tape right about here, and now we need to cut it to length. Now we're going to apply mud here onto the wall. I'm now going to place tape right to the bottom of that opening where it will clear it with no problem. So right about here. Now we simply just take the mud out from behind it like we do the taper joints. Now we're gonna put a little mud here for our other piece to overlap. And then we're going to place that right up, close that in. And this side, as you can remember, did get covered by the cover. And now after this dries, we can finish it when we finish the other coats. After the taping dried, we went through with a six inch knife and got a little bit wider and spread out and feathered out the joints. If you notice any areas in the drywall that you can see where the paper is kind of pushed out, that's a sign that the drywall is broken underneath the paper and this needs repaired also because that hump will always be there unless it's fixed. So you wanna take your utility knife and just cut along the edge where that paper is broke. Then we're just gonna snap all that out of there if it's loose. So as you can see, that was definitely broken underneath of the paper. So we need to get all that out. I now need to cut my tape so we go about two inches past the area on each side. And now this tape, we're going to place it to where it overlaps this other sheet just a little bit, but it fixes that area. So it's gonna go in like so. So I'm just gonna take my mud and mud and pack it into that place where all that gypsum fell out. And then we're gonna fill it in. I'm now gonna place my tape right over that area. 
and then we just smooth it out like we did the other repair. Now when we tape this joint, it's going to be very strong underneath instead of having that broken paper. I'm now going to show you how to finish a corner that has an off angle like this. You could use standard tape, but it's definitely not superior and it's really hard to make the corner look good. That's when I would recommend using no coat. No coat is that flex corner or flexible corner that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to use the 450. And now the 450 is actually four and a half inches wide. So whenever you fold it in the corner, you're going to have a total of four and a half inches of coverage. So it's going to give it a nice look by the time you put your last coat over it. And it's going to be something that you're going to want to use for any off angled or any kind of large gaps that need filled. Anything like that, this no coat's great for it. And it's actually just a laminated drywall corner, but it's easy to install. We're going to use the green lid drywall mud with a six inch knife. This is the joint in which we're going to install the flex corner or the no coat on. As you can see, there are some gaps and this is 63 foot long. So this is a really long corner, but we're going to attempt it using the no coat. In order to open this up, we're just going to open it like so, but I'm not going to take the whole roll out. There is a place here on the side that's already pre-cut that's going to be used to feed the no coat out. All right, as you can see, we got it started. <clears throat> now we're going to pull it across the room to cut it to length. All right, I'm going to mark this just about a quarter inch less than what I need. I don't want it to hit the wall when I get to there. And then in order to cut this, we're just going to use 10 snips to cut right off. I'm now going to fold this to roughly the angle in which we need, and it'll flex once we get it in the place. But I want to show you that, and you'll notice there's writing here that says this side to drywall. So that's going to go against drywall, then this is the face of it that's going to be exposed. So we're just going to give it a nice little bend. So we're going to pre-bend the whole piece before we get started. Because I have my helper with me in the background, as you can see there, he's going to start one side and I'm going to start the other. And we're going to coat this corner to install the no coat. And with that being said, we're going to take a six inch knife and I usually run it about four inches from the edge, even up to six. Just make sure there's enough mud under it. So just like when we installed the tape, I'm just going to take a clump of mud here on the end and just start placing the mud underneath where the no coat's going like so. And this doesn't have to be anything fancy, just as long as we get good coverage to give that no coat a place to stick to. And it's, again, just like taping, same idea. I have him holding the end to help support it, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this, and we're going to tuck it right in and eyeball about where that corner is and just start pushing this into place like so, and just kind of smoothing it out and pushing it right into that corner. Just like that. And we're gonna run this down the whole length first. Good. Now as you can see, I'm gonna hold it as he goes down, and now he's gonna lift it up and get it started. And that way, we're going to keep working it in as we go. And in order to keep this all in one piece, this is what you got to do. So having a helper is essential here. Now that it's stuck on the corner, now I'm going to take my six inch knife. And I would start at one end or the other, but the camera had to get in here so I could see this better. So we're just simply going to smooth that mud out on both sides and that's what's going to seal it to the ceiling or wall.
you are applying the mud on the joint for the no coat, remember it does not have to look pretty, it really just has to be a good base to secure the no coat to the drywall. And with that being said, you do want to make sure you get the no coat on and smooth out before it starts drying. As you can see here, I used a screw to hold it into place and then smoothed it out about 12 feet at a time. And that was a good system and worked well for me. And I also bought two scrap pieces to make this full length here. So that's something you may or may not want to do. It's best to have one continuous run, but because I wanted to save a little money, I just butted it together and finished right over the joint. Now that we got everything taped and our corner bead is on, I'm now going to apply a coat of mud to the inside corners and outside corners. So in order to do this, I'm going to be using the red lead mud, which is the multi-purpose mid-weight joint compound. And this is going to be a little easier to sand for our final coats, so, and it's easier to work with in general. Now that we're on the subject about drywall mud, I'd like to show you that there's a purple lid also that's by the brand USG, and it's the same brand that makes the green lid, but Proform is the brand that makes the red lid, but these two are both mid-weight equivalents. And also, you can buy powdered drywall mud mix and you can mix it up yourself how you want it, but as a newbie or a DIYer, this pre-ready mix is ready to go for you, so it has bulk of the work done, just so you know. So I'm gonna mix this up and get it in my pan and I'm gonna be using a six inch knife. Whenever you open a fresh bucket of mud, check the edge here and if you have this old dried crusty mud at top, try to get that out of there because that's not gonna work out well when you're trying to finish your drywall and just discard that. I'm gonna begin on this inside corner. So something that's really important about an inside corner is typically you would finish one side, let it dry, and then do the other side. The reason why that is, if you're trying to finish this side, then you try to finish the other side, you'll hit the other side that you already tried to finish, and then you mess it up and you gotta start over. So as a beginner, you definitely wanna do that method at first. Maybe once you get more advanced, you could try to do both at once, but most people just typically do one side at a time. So this is similar to how we put the mud on our knife to begin with. And again, everybody has their own technique. I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get mud on my knife so that I have more mud on the side of the knife that's gonna be on the inside corner. Then we're gonna feather it out. So I'm gonna grab some mud here like so. And as you can see, we got more on the one side than the other. Now we're gonna start up here and come down the wall. And we're gonna press it right onto that corner and we're gonna keep our knife tight in the corner and smooth it out as we go. And then after that, we're gonna to try to shape it with our knife. So we're gonna to try to shape it to where there's more mud in the corner than on this side that's next to the unfinished side of the drywall. So we're going to place it in here and then just kind of smooth it out like so. And something else that's really important too, is make sure you got all the junk off the drywall because as you're trying to finish it, if you have a clump that's in that corner from taping, it's gonna mess up your edge as you're trying to finish. So you wanna make sure that your corner is nice and clean before you start. So I usually go over it with a few swipes to try to get all the air bubbles and make sure it's packed in there tight. If you only scrape over it once, you have a big tendency of leaving air bubbles in behind the drywall. So just make sure we smooth it out well. And that side from here to here is complete at this time. And now we're going to get off of the step ladder and continue going down to the floor using that same method. Again, make sure you leave mud in this corner and then feather it out to nothing. And if you get any mud on this side of the corner, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean that off to make sure there's none on that wall when we go to finish the other side of the corner. Music 
You'll notice it's very difficult to get that transition from the area in which you finish from above to the new area to where the, you got to blend it. So I just take my knife real gently on the finished part from the one we just did and then start and try to smooth it and blend it together. And you may not have it looking perfect on your first pass, but you just got to try to work it in. All right, now we just continue down until we get to the floor. And when I get to this bottom, I like to kind of do it opposite, go from the bottom up to meet where we got it started here. Now that I got the mud roughly on the corner, again, I'm just going to blend it all together here. Now we're gonna let this dry overnight or if it takes longer than overnight, if you have more moisture in the air, let it dry all the way regardless. I'm now going to do an outside corner where we installed the corner bead and something very different compared to the inside corner. You can actually finish both sides at the same time, but I still like to do one side to jump and do the other side. And as far as getting the mud on, it's the same idea. We wanna make sure that we put it on tight against the corner bead and then feather it out to nothing using a six inch knife. So we're going to keep it to where, if you remember when we installed the corner bead, there's gonna be a bed of mud here right along the corner bead. So same idea, however you can get the mud on is kind of up to you, but I still like to use the whole, put more mud on this side of the knife that's gonna run along the bead and then taper it out to nothing so it feathers as you run it. And then you can also go like this and just scrape along the corner bead, but that tends to take more time. It kind of depends on how you want to do it. So for me, I'm just going to do it how I've been running the mud before. But once you get the mud on, you simply just try to smear it off, so to speak, to where you have the bed of mud right along the corner bead out to nothing. So very simple idea here and just takes a little bit of practice to get really good at it. So the idea is after you get it on the corner bead, we just simply take the end of our knife on this side, rest it against the corner bead to use as a guide, and go right down the edge, and then it's gonna be tapered down to nothing naturally because of how the corner bead's installed. So you'll notice it's easier to do these outside corners than it is those inside corners. And then I'm just gonna run it right down to the floor and then do the other side. If you do decide to finish both sides of your outside corners at the same time, as you know, they're both wet. So if you do get a little bit of this over mudding on the corner, just let it dry and then it'll knock off in two seconds. If you try to swipe it off or something, you risk getting it into the fresh mud. So we're gonna let that dry and then address it later. When you are finishing drywall, it's actually best to wear light colored clothes like a white t-shirt and light colored jeans or even white jeans because when you're finishing the drywall, you will get mud on you here and there and it will show up exponentially with dark colors as I am wearing. But if you do not need to do anything where you have to worry about looking dirty, it's not that big a deal, just a little tip. Now going to move into the second coat also known as blocking. Now with the blocking we're going to be using the mud from the red lid drywall buckets and this is the mid weight and we're going to be using an 8 inch knife and this is where we're going to blend together the tape joints to give it more of a smooth surface 
So this is going to take a good bit of drywall mud in comparison to the taping. First thing we're going to do is just clean the surface, make sure there's no humps or bumps of loose drywall in the way here. So we got it kind of smoothed out. And now when we load the mud onto our eight inch knife, what I like to do, the technique I like to do is get some on the drywall knife and then just kind of taper the edge off like so. So that way when we spread it across the joint, it'll move more evenly. So we're gonna start here at the end and apply a medium amount of pressure. Then simply just start applying the mud right to that joint. Again, adding just a medium amount of pressure at first. And we're gonna get this going clear across this joint to where it's manageable. And then we're gonna start smoothing it out. Just get a nice coat of mud on. Now that the mud is generally here on the joint, now what we need to do is just apply more pressure to the edge at the top, and then we're gonna taper this top area down towards the middle of the joint. So we're gonna apply more pressure to the upper side of this knife and go across the top and again, trying to shape it to blend, similar to how we did the corner. As you can see, it's pushing it into towards the center like so. And as you can see, it's starting to feather it out at the top. And now we're gonna do the same to the bottom. Now we're gonna apply more pressure to the bottom of the knife and it's gonna be kind of tilted towards the bottom so that it angles up towards the center of the coat. Now that we got our taper on each end of this coat, we're just gonna go with a medium amount of pressure and our knife angled at about a 45 and we're just gonna smooth that out. And now this is now blocked and that's really all there is to the horizontal joints. I'm now gonna show you how to do a vertical joint, also known as a butt joint, where the two pieces butt that are not tapered. Here's a tapered joint. And just so you know, oftentimes we'll go through and do all the vertical joints or the butt joints first, and then we'll let those dry, and then we'll hit the tapered joint, just so that way it's easier to blend it all together that way. So now we're going to place a coat of mud right over the face of it just to get it on, just like we did the taper joint. So we're gonna just start here and just start coating it with a nice liberal amount of drywall mud. And it doesn't hurt to water this down just a little bit so it's easier to work with. Just like we did on the taper joint, we're going to place more pressure on this side of the knife so when we scrape down it's going to push more towards the center and taper out these edges or feather out whichever term you want to use. So we're going to start like this. You see how it's tapering it out real nice. Then we're going to come up. Then do the same on this side, except we're going to put pressure here on this end. Kind of feather that out. And now, just like we did the taper joint, we're going to apply medium amount of pressure and just smooth this out. And now you'll notice when it's on properly, when you can just barely see the tape because you don't want it too much mud on here because you have a big hump. So you want to make sure you smooth it out to where the tape is hidden, yet you can notice it's not super thick on here. So you don't want to hump in the joint because with these butt joints, you don't have a taper like you do the taper joint, so it's easily done. So that looks good there. It's, nice, it's on nice and even. And you'll notice these lines here, those lines are okay. And just with the taper joint, they'll have them as well. These are going to be shown because you're kind of flat in the middle and then the edges feather out. So you're going to have these little lines most of the time on the edges. So that looks good. 
Now we're gonna do all of our vertical joints and let them dry. When finishing, pretend that the electrical boxes really aren't even there and finish right over them because you can break the mud out of them later when they're finished. While you are doing the second coat, you want to look out for any bubbled up tape or any tape imperfections because now is the time to fix it before you block over it. And in order to fix the bubble tape, you simply just cut the bubble out, remove the bubble, and then you would place joint compound and replacement where the bubble was and then tape right over it. And then you're going to let that dry before you block over it just like you would a standard tape joint. Another issue you might run into is if you had any wide joints where you had to put a lot of mud before you taped, those could also shrink and you'll want to fill over those as well and repair that before you block over it, just so you know. It's been over 24 hours since we applied the first coat to the screw holes. Now we're going to apply the second coat. As you can see right here is where the screw hole actually is. And if you rub across it after that first coat, you can still feel just a little divot most of the time. Now we're going to use the mid-weight drywall mud. You could also use the green lid again here if you want, but this one's a little easier to sand. With this, we're simply going to do the same method, except this time we're just going to wipe it totally clean and apply pressure. So we're gonna fill in all the screw holes again with the second coat. This inside corner has totally dried on the one side that we already did. It's been well over 24 hours. And first thing I'm gonna do when I do start this second side, I'm just gonna run my knife down, knock off any loose drywall mud that might have hit from doing the other side of the inside corner. And then after that, you literally just do the exact same thing you did on this side, but you're gonna do it onto this side. So keep your knife tight in the corner, taper it in towards the corner, and smooth out this side as we go. So again, same exact technique. I'm now going to do the outside corner second coat. And if you remember from the first time I put mud on this, I said if there's any over mudding here, just let it dry because it's easier just to take your knife and just scrape it off now that it's dried or you can take a sanding sponge and just hit it real quick, just enough to knock off that loose debris. So in order to do these outside corners, I'm gonna step up to the eight inch knife. I'm first gonna hit this outside edge first, knock off the loose mud and now because we're using a bigger knife, it's going to take this first coat, cover it up and run it out just a little further. So it's the same idea. We're going to use the outside edge as a guide and then just feather it out to nothing. Now that we got everything blocked with the second coat, we're going to move on to the third coat. The third coat is also known as skimming or the skim coat. And this is where we try to blend the block coat or second coat in with the flat part of the drywall for the final coat of mud before the sanding. So in order to do this, we're going to need a 12 inch knife. And with the 12 inch knife, we're going to hold it to where this end of it is going to overlap the middle of the block coat and then this is going to skim right across like so and the first thing we need to do just like anything else go through and we got to clean off any of the humps and bumps of loose drywall mud that might be stuck to the joint 
And when it comes to the mud we're using, I'm using the same mud that I've been using for the block coat. It's the mid-weight, and with the mid-weight, I do have it watered down just a little more than what the block coat was, because when you do your skimming, it's gonna be a very thin coat of mud that goes across the joint. So we're first gonna load up our 12 inch knife, similar to how we've been loading up the knife before. Just a little bit of mud, you don't wanna overload it here. And we're gonna go right over where I just mentioned, nice thin coat of mud like so. About like that. And we're just gonna keep loading this joint clear across till I get to the other window. And then you can also work just about a sheet of drywall worth at a time, whatever you're comfortable with until you get your technique down. So I'm gonna do that first right across the top. I'm now gonna do the same thing to the bottom part of the joint. We're going to go right across, kind of blending in the middle of the block with the overlap. Again, we're looking for a nice thin coat of mud here. Now that we got the mud loosely on the wall, we're now going to shape it. And with the shaping process here, you don't really put pressure on one side or the other of the knife. We're literally trying to wipe it smooth and flat. So from the edge of the fresh mud to the middle of the joint. So we're gonna start here and we're just gonna keep our knife flat, just smooth it out. And something really important you gotta watch for here, if you get any debris or dirt in this coat, you gotta smooth it out because again, this is the final coat before sanding. So if you get a chunk in here and you get a streak, you need to make sure you get that out now. So that looks really good, really smooth, really thin. Now we're gonna step down here and do the bottom part of this joint. All right, that looks really good, it's skimmed. Now just like all the other coats, we need to allow this to dry for about 24 hours using this standard mud. There is fast drying mud, but I typically always use the standard. So now after this dries, we'll be ready to sand. But again, make sure it's totally dry first. And if you do have just any little wrinkle when you have your skim coat finished, it's okay if it's very small because that'll knock off very easy with sandpaper. I got a little one right here if you take a look. So that little one right there will sand out with no problem. As you can see, it's very minute to the rest of the coat. It looks really good. I'm now gonna do this vertical joint. And remember with the vertical joints, this is the butt joint. And with the butt joint, there's no taper. Because there's no taper, there's always gonna be a slight hump here compared to a taper joint. So with that being said, just finish this just like you would the taper joint. To be honest with you, there's no, really no difference other than we're working vertically. But I just wanted to let you know that there is definitely not a embedded tape that's gonna be flush with the surface. So after you finish it with the skim coat, it's gonna blend in really well, just like the taper joint, but it won't be perfect like the taper joints, but it's gonna be very flat and you won't notice the transition with the correct finishing. Now that's skimmed and that looks really good. And again, we let that dry, then we'll sand it. Along with the skim coat of the joints, you wanna make sure you skim coat around any repairs that you did. So here's that receptacle that we've been repairing in this video. So now for this final touch up, we wanna make sure we clean out around the repair and get off any loose. And then we're going to just take a third coat right around the receptacle like so. Again, same principle, just make sure that we just fill that in and taper it very smoothly. All right, we're now just going to let that dry and then sand it. I'm going to show you how to finish up this no coat or the flex corner. And the reason why it's called no coat is it literally just takes one skim coat across the whole edge of each side of the no coat. And actually we're gonna stop our coat right here, about a half inch or so from the very center of the no coat. And I got an eight inch knife for this and it's the same mud that I used to do the third coat on the walls. So it's the red lid or mid weight mud that's watered down a little bit so it goes on smooth. 
So just like the skim coat, we're first going to go across, knock off anything loose. And we would typically start at the end of the run and work over, but for the camera to see, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna start right here and just show you how I'm gonna skim right across to blend in the edge of the no coat. I'm literally just gonna take mud that's tapered on the knife and we're simply going to run it real smooth to blend in that edge like so. It's really about the same technique that we've been doing to try to skim. When you're skimming this, you'll notice there is a little hump right here in the no coat, and that's what we're finishing right up to. And really that's all there is to skimming the edge of the no coat, and like I said, you do that to both sides of it, and then you're good to go. Of course, after the skim coat dries, you will be ready to sand it, and you'll follow the same techniques that I'm going to show you later in this video on how to sand. Now that we got two coats of mud on the screw holes, we're just gonna hit them one more time real quick for a third coat. Just make sure we got plenty of fill. Same idea, put the mud on, wipe the mud off clean, and then do that to all the screw holes one more time. Now that this outside corner is totally dry, we're gonna place a skim coat right over this for the final coat. And something about the inside corners, Sometimes you can get away with not skimming them. And in fact, this corner looks good the way we have it. So I'm actually not gonna skim this inside corner. So if it looks like it needs it, you can do it. But I think after a quick sanding, we're gonna be good to go. But this one needs one more coat for a skim coat. And to do this, we do the same idea that we've been doing. We're going to take our 12 inch knife, use the edge as a guide. And again, we're trying to just get it to where it feathers out to nothing similar to how we've been doing these last coats. And we need to make sure we knock off any of these chunks of drywall first and scrape off any of the debris that's on the wall. But other than that, we're gonna go ahead and skim this outside corner. The process of applying tape, doing your second coat, and then skimming with your third coat is the most standard practice when it comes to drywall finishing. But there is also one more different level you can move up to, and that's level five finishing. And it's a very advanced technique to where you do everything that I showed you here, except you would then run a skim coat over the whole wall and then smooth it out to where everything is perfectly flat. And again, that is an advanced technique that is not very common and very expensive to have done. Now that we got the third coat on all the drywall and it's skimmed and we're ready to sand. So in order to sand, the biggest go-to that you'll want to get is a pole sander. And this is a sanding head that has rubber edges so you don't damage the corners of the wall when you're in there. And we can switch out the sanding pads so we can switch to different grits if we have to. So let me show you the different grit sandpaper that I got for this. The sanding head is the same brand as the knives that I bought to finish the drywall. And it came with these sanding discs. We actually got 100 grit, we got 180, and then we got 80 grit. So between the three grits, you'll have plenty of different sandpaper for your most rough areas down to your most finished areas. So if you're sanding and you notice a really rough patch of a wall, you can switch to the 80 grit, but typically we just keep the 100 grit on here. And that comes with the head, like I said. And then along with that, you're wanting to get a sanding sponge. These sanding sponges are great for corners. And they, this one has dual grit. There's a coarse side, then there's a more fine side. So this is gonna be great. Again, rough areas, you want the more coarse, and then the more smooth areas, you're gonna to wanna to use the more fine. Then of course, you need safety glasses and a respirator, so that way you don't breathe in the dust. For this demonstration, I'll probably keep this stuff off until I have it explained, and then once I go wide open, I'll put it on. So if you wanna purchase any of this stuff, there's gonna be a link in the description below so you can check it out. In order to put the sandpaper onto the head, it's a hook and loop system, so it's like Velcro. It simply just Velcros right onto the head like so. So as you can see, it's stuck on there and ready to sand. I'm gonna show you how to sand the walls and the corners of the walls because they both require two different techniques. 
So the biggest important part of sanding is make sure you have a well-lit room that you're trying to sand. So I like to carry a light with me so that way we can shine it up the edge of the wall so you can see all the imperfections while you're sanding. You don't want to think you got everything sanded well. You shine a light then you see all these imperfections. So a well-lit area is very important. So I'm going to begin by taking my pole sander and sanding this part here that we finished throughout this video. And let me go step by step on how to do this. So I'm first gonna turn my light on so I can see well and shine it accordingly. Now that I can see the imperfections in the drywall mud, I'm just gonna start with my pole sander and sand where all the joints are, where all the drywall mud is primarily located and just try to smooth it out and get all of the imperfections out that you can. So as you sand, just keep inspecting to make sure you don't over sand because once you get the imperfections out, and if you notice a big imperfection, don't try to get it all the way out in one shot. You're going to have to touch that up with drywall mud, wait for it to dry, then finish sanding. But as of right now, you, we can easily sand this. So we're just going and sanding like so, and inspecting and making sure that we're going to have a nice smooth flat surface. And this is when you'll be thankful you use the mid-weight mud because if you use that full strength mud, it doesn't sand near this easy. And then right here where it blends from the drywall to the joint that we finished, you want to give it a little extra attention because that's where it has to blend together. And something really important that you need to remember, you don't want to sand really hard on the paper of the drywall because it'll make it fray and when you paint it, it's gonna raise up that paper. It's gonna be something you'll have to sand out after you paint if you over sand on the drywall. Had that happen to me one time and it was really a pain to fix. So you don't wanna do that. So make sure you don't hit the edge of this paper too hard. And then after we sand our whole joint and got everything smooth, we're just gonna lightly go across the whole piece of drywall and maybe throw a couple swipes across these screws that we patched just to knock off any debris that could be on here. And that's really it with the pole sanding on the flats of the wall. Now, after we go over it with the pole sander, we are going to switch to our sanding sponge. And this is where I like to actually take the light and shine up the wall like so. So if we notice anything that's real obvious, like right here, could get a little extra attention. So we're gonna sand that out. And as you can see, that little groove that's right there is now gonna disappear. And again, you definitely wanna make sure you wear your mask and glasses here. This is just for a demonstration on how to do the sanding. So right here on these edges, you just wanna give that a little extra attention if it needs it. And now after we got that joint sanded and it looks really good, I don't see any grooves in it, that's what you want. We now hit the screw holes and all we gotta do, same idea, just shine a light on it. Just give it a quick sanding. And again, don't over sand the drywall. Then after it's smooth, it looks really good right there. That's all we gotta do to the drywall to sand it. So the flats are pretty straightforward. Now let me show you a corner. When it comes to sanding the corners, I usually just use the sanding block here because it has the shape of the corner on the sanding sponge. And we're gonna place that right back into the corner. And then we're gonna sand lightly and just kind of shape that corner to the squareness of the sanding block or sanding sponge, whichever term you wanna use. So you need to sand that out. And then while I'm sanding it, I'm gonna hit where we put the drywall mud at the same time. So we hit them both at once. And then after we get one side sanded, we're going to switch to the other side, kind of do the same thing. Just make sure we shape that corner as nice and sharp as we can without over sanding and taking all the drywall mud off. And then a place that meets in a ceiling like this, we're going to hit that as well. All the corners where they come in together, we're going to get those nice and sharp. So that's really the idea to the corners is just making sure that you use a block of some kind to shape them into a nice sharp corner. And then that's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna sand the rest of this garage.
In order to minimize the drywall dust in the atmosphere, there are pole sanders that are attached to a vacuum that vacuum the dust as you sand. Those can be expensive and they are a little bit more cumbersome instead of just using a pole sander but I wanted to let you know those options are out there. And if you wanna know how I hung the drywall in this garage, I'll put a video link in the top right hand corner of the screen and you'll see me step by step on how we installed all the drywall. If you would like to see how I'm going to clean and paint this drywall or how we hung this drywall originally, check out this video or check out this video. It'll help you out.